What's up my comic comrades? Today we start covering a brand new series by Tom Taylor titled Superman Son of Kal-El. Specifically, we're going to give you a rundown of issues one and two of the series, which focuses on John Kent finding his place in the world as the son of Superman. But first, we want to thank Star Trek Fleet Command for sponsoring today's episode. Star Trek Fleet Command is a brand new mobile open world strategic MMO game that throws you into the world of Star Trek and allows you to interact with your favorite characters from the original series, The Next Generation, the J.J. Abrams films, and more. It's free to play on iOS and Android, and you can download the game right now using our link in the description to start exploring the Star Trek universe with Captain Kirk, Spock, Picard, Data, Geordi, and Worf, just to name a few. You can also build and customize your own starship from the iconic models of the USS Enterprise, the Klingon D4, and the USS Discovery, which I have to say is our favorite part. Then you can upgrade your ship's equipment and choose your perfect bridge crew before heading into the final frontier on unique story-driven missions. Along the way, you can join millions of other players to forge alliances and battle alongside the allies in your Starfleet, to capture different territories and put enemies like the Klingons and Romulans on notice. Or you can travel the neutral zone as an independent and play by your own rules. Fleet Command also gives you monthly updates updates to constantly keep the story immersive and engaging. Bottom line, if you're a Star Trek fan like we are, you want to be playing Star Trek Fleet Command. So click our link in the description and start playing for free right now. Now let's see where Tom Taylor takes us with Superman, Son of Kal-El. Issue 1 starts off with Superman fighting off a planetary invasion, with John Kent narrating, saying, My dad says it was the single greatest day of his life. The galaxy was under attack, though he admits that it wasn't the best, he was doing what he does, trying to save the world. But some of his friends weren't having it. We then see Green Lantern tell Superman, you're not supposed to be here. Martian Manhunter then says, you have somewhere to be. But Superman tells both of them, it's a planetary invasion. Green Lantern responds, no, it's an attempted planetary invasion. And as attempts go, I've seen far more impressive ones. Martian Manhunter then says, they're not getting anywhere near Earth. We'll turn them around. You really should get to the fortress. When Superman arrives at the fortress, he sees Batman standing in the front and asks, what are you doing? Batman replies, standing guard. Superman then tells him, you know there's a planetary invasion occurring, right? Batman responds, it's an attempted planetary invasion. Essentially, the whole attempted planetary invasion thing becomes an ongoing joke. Anyway, Batman continues to tell Superman, I'm receiving updates. I can protect your family and the planet at the same time. Superman tells him, right, because you're Batman. With Batman saying, we'll keep the world safe, Clark. We know you have something more important to do. You should get in there. Superman then shakes Batman's hand saying, thank you for being here, Bruce. With Batman telling him, I wouldn't be anywhere else. We are then taken inside the fortress where we see Lois and Labor with Wonder Woman by her side helping her. Lois then says, cutting it kind of close for a man who's faster than a speeding bullet. Superman asks, is no one worried about the alien invasion? Lois says, there's an alien invasion? With Wonder Woman telling her, it's an attempted alien invasion. John Kent then continues to narrate saying, my parents are two of the bravest people I know and they were both scared, not just on that day, but for the whole term. A baby of two worlds. They knew something could go wrong. My dad spent eight months listening intently to two heartbeats and hoping. They risked so much, but they decided I was a risk worth taking. And on the next page, we see Clark and Lois holding their baby for the first time. We are then taken to Batman and Wonder Woman standing guard outside the fortress where Batman says to Wonder Woman, I've run some tests, his unique physiology, Kryptonian and human. He could be more than Clark. Wonder Woman then tells him, you know, Bruce, you have a reputation and it isn't helped by conducting tests on the unborn child of our friends. Regardless of his powers, he will have the compassion of Superman and the fierce commitment of Lois Lane. He could do anything. We are finally brought to present day in California where we see massive forest fires with firemen trying to put it out to no avail. While captions of Wonder Woman read, John Kent could be the best of us, faster than fate, as powerful as hope able to lift us all. We then see John arrive to help the firemen put out the fires, with John saying, it's gonna be okay, we could fight this together. John then flies over the fires to see what started it because every fire needs a spark. He then hears a voice in the distance say, stay back, to which he says to himself, and there's the spark. On the next page, we see someone on fire screaming, leave me alone, as a force field of fire pushes back military, at which point they begin to start firing at the being, but the bullets do nothing, so the military calls an air support to bomb the person. John then catches the missile mid-air with his hand saying, nope, while destroying it with with his heat vision, he then tells the military, call off the attack. The general then says, I don't take orders from you, kid. Half the state is on fire. We need to put this monster down. John then looks back saying, he's not a monster. I could see past the light past the heat. I could see the fear. Long story short, John makes his way to the man that's on fire, but the man says to him, please, don't come any closer. But John tells him, I know you're scared, but I promise I won't hurt you. And you can't hurt me. Hi, I'm John. The man tells him, I don't know who I am. I don't know how I got here. I don't know what's happening to me. John then uses his x-ray vision to check out the man saying, I think your heat is connected to your stress levels. And being on fire and under attack from the military looks pretty stressful. After this, John is able to calm the metahuman down with compassion saying, just breathe. 
I got you. Essentially, we learn that this isn't a villain, it's a metahuman who doesn't know how to control his powers and set the forest on fire by accident, which was made worse by his anxiety of setting everything on fire and the military attacking him. After calming the man down, John hands him over to the military telling the captain this man isn't in control of his powers, and it seems to be triggered by his anxiety. But when John leaves, the captain knocked the dude out with the back of his gun. So John returns saying, why did you do that? The captain says, I'm not risking my people by having him conscious. Now put him down and turn him over. John then looks at him saying, no. The captain says, think hard kid you really want to go against your government? We are then taken to the island of Corto Maltese, where we see him talking to Robin sometime after the fire. And Damien asks, so you saved him, but then you turned him over to the military. And you don't know if you actually saved him, or you made his life worse. John says, yeah, am I worried about nothing? Damien responds, hell no. The guy could easily be in mid-autopsy, with his powers being extracted and weaponized this very moment. John then continues to talk to Damien, while Damien is in the middle of a fight. John asks, you know there's a bunch of ninjas above the alley. Damien says, I'm in the middle of a tournament, and one of the competitors probably wants me dead rather than fight me. Do you mind if I deal with these while we talk? What's up? John says, I guess I'm trying to work out who I am and I wanted to talk to you because... Damien then interrupts saying, because I'm your only friend you're not related to. John says, yeah. They then continue to talk while Damien fights off a clan of ninjas, with John helping him here and there as ninja stars bounce off his head and katanas bounce off his shoulders. Damien eventually says, I get what's bugging you. There's nothing heroic about serving the status quo. I mean, there's a reason I'm a vigilante. John replies, I don't want to put out fires and ignore the cause. Damien tells him, exactly. But it's easy to punch a ninja, a little harder to punch the climate crisis, inequality, the erosion of a free press, and the rise of demagogues. Once Damien defeats all the ninjas, John then uses a streetlight pole to wrap all the ninjas up. And before Damien leaves, he tells John, Here, I want you to watch something. It's an underground stream called The Truth. They report what others are too afraid to. I have to go, but you're the son of Lois Lane. She's dedicated her life to exposing corruption and injustice. Of course you feel like you should do more. John responds, I know I do. I just don't want to overstep and make people nervous. Damien responds, There are some people in this world who could do with being a little nervous. What do you want that symbol on your chest to stand for? John replies, Truth, justice, and a better world. I just want to help. Damien just looks at him saying, good, it's time for Superman to stop fighting the symptoms. You're powerful enough to be the cure. As we get a shot of John flying above the earth. And with that, the issue comes to an end. So let's jump to issue two. Issue two starts off with John laying in bed watching The Truth, a news group who reports on what others are too afraid to, which if you recall, Damien just introduced to him in the last issue. Truth is saying, this is what's been hidden from you today. This is what we've uncovered. You're watching The Truth. A boatload of asylum seekers have escaped the supposedly glorious nation of Gomorrah and are traveling over rough seas towards Metropolis. But before John can finish listening, his mom calls him saying, John, John, wake up, you're gonna be late. We then see John get up saying, I'm usually never late for anything. It's what happens when you move faster than the speed of sound. But today I could be late because today I'm not the son of Superman. I'm Finn Connors. It's my new secret identity. As we see him walking down the stairs with a blonde wig, sunglasses, and clothes he wouldn't normally wear. After Lois says bye to him, he heads off in his 2003 Cords Motor Jeep and we find out on the next page he's got a new disguise and identity because he's attending his first day of college with a whole new life. Because remember, in the last issue, Damien told John, if you need a break, from the superpowered life, my father is Batman. We could build you another identity. And in this issue, we see John took Damien up on that offer. Anyway, as John is walking into his first day of college, we see someone in a car nearby loading an assault rifle. Meanwhile, John or Finn Connors gets asked to sign up for the media department by someone with pink hair, which he does. At the same time, we see the guy with the assault rifle in front of the school while a girl says, Kyle, what the hell are you doing? Where did you get that? He tells her to shut up. It's too soon to politicize this as he starts opening fire on the crowd. But John says to himself, and as quick as that, my cover is blown, faster than 67 speeding bullets as he blocks every single gunshot and takes down the gunman. After using his x-ray vision to make sure the guy doesn't have any more weapons on him, he hands him over to the police, at which point John asks if everyone is okay, and they just start surrounding him saying, oh my god, it's John Kent. Thank you. John then goes to leave, but is stopped by the guy with the pink hair from earlier who says, Finn, I think you lost this, while giving him his blonde wig. John then picks up his Jeep and flies off, as one does. We then see John went to the moon, and while sitting on the moon, he's contemplating his thoughts, saying, I can't hide. I can't pretend to be normal when people need me. I guess I just have to be happy being John Kent, the son of Superman. A lifetime in the public eye, living in the biggest shadow in the universe. And wouldn't you know it, Superman shows up saying, You okay? John asks, You heard? Superman tells him, I heard. John then says, super hearing? Superman tells him, Lois. The Man of Steel then asks, so that's it for Finn Connors? John responds, yeah, sorry. I know Batman and Oracle pulled in a lot of favors to create that alter ego. Superman then tells him, you never have to apologize for doing the right thing, John. I'm just sorry for what you had to sacrifice to do it. We then get an awesome panel of them looking at the Earth from the moon with Superman saying, it's big, isn't it? John tells him, it's big and very, very small. Superman then says, yes. John then tells him, you could see what I could see, Dad. Ocean struggling to breathe, forests disappearing, ice melting, 
causing inaction due to selflessness and fear, division and tribalism, and stupid borders. Superman then tells him, I get you're having a bad day, but that's pretty bleak. John then says, am I wrong? Superman tells him, no, you're not wrong, but you're looking at the small. Now look at the big, what could it be? John answers, it could be a place where every problem could be tackled if only the world would unite. A place where no one is left behind. John then asks his dad, why don't you do more? And he immediately says, I apologize, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Then Superman answers saying, no, it's okay, I should be able to handle some constructive criticism. I think part of me holds back because I wasn't born here. I can help, but I can't lead except by example. Part of me feels it's not my place. John says, that's idiotic. You're the greatest hero on the planet. If you won't step up, who will? Superman then says to his son, I was thinking you. This is your planet, John. This is your place. John then asks, are you literally dropping the weight of the world on my shoulders? Superman says, you won't have to lift it alone. You have friends to help you bear the burden. He continues to say, come follow me as he takes him to the Arctic Circle in Greenland, the second fortress of solitude. He then gives him a giant key saying, I want you to look after this fortress. No parties. I'll know if Damien breaks anything. Superman then gives John a box and when he opens it up, he sees it's Superman's old cape and a new costume. He made it for him saying, I know you have a suit from the future, but I thought you might want one for now. Superman continues to say, I was going to give this to you on your 18th birthday, but there's a chance I'll have to go away. And if I do need to go away, you need to look after the big and very, very small world, son. And if you feel you need to step in more than I do, I trust you to do it right. Now you should get home. Back at home while lying in bed, John starts listening to the Truth News Group again and hears them saying there's reports of asylum seekers, which the Gamoran government insists doesn't exist, and no one is going to help them. No country responded to their distress signal. Why? The truth is, no one wants to risk the anger of the resource-rich nation. No one wants to paint that target on themselves. These leaders don't want to upset a thin-skinned tyrant. At which point, John sits up, opens the box containing the suit his father just gave him, and sets off to save the asylum seekers. We then see the asylum seekers sinking in the ocean with a boy falling overboard, but a red streak appears plunging into the water, saying, I've got him. As John brings the boy back on board to his family, the people say, Thank you, thank you. We didn't think anyone was coming. John replies, I'm sorry I didn't come sooner. The boy he saved then says, I know who you are. You're Superman. As John lifts the boat out of the ocean and flies them back to Metropolis saying, welcome to the city of tomorrow. John then leaves the police to get these people to safety, but sees they start handcuffing them. So he flies back and starts using his heat vision to disintegrate the handcuffs. The police captain then says, son, there's cameras watching. I appreciate what you did here today and these people will be looked after, but you have to understand there's a process. John then just looks at the captain saying, these people need help, not handcuffs. The captain then says, I but John interrupts saying, I'll just remove them, Captain. At which point the captain yells the orders, no restraints. Before John leaves, the little boy he saved comes up to him saying, Superman, he bends down saying, it's all right, these people are gonna look after you. And I'll be checking in on you, I promise, as he flies away to the top of a nearby skyscraper, where he's greeted by the truth, the same dude he's been watching on his phone. John says, I know you. The man replies, you watch the truth? That's gonna make some of my friends very happy. John then asks, how did you get on the roof? How did you sneak up on me? The dude responds, you were pretty distracted, but it's all right. I just wanted to thank you. John then asks for what? And the guy takes off his mask saying, for saving me, revealing it's the guy with the pink hair from earlier who asked him to sign up for the media department. He tells John, you lost your secret identity for me. I figured you deserve to know mine. I'm Jay Nakamura. Did you want your fake hair back? Jay then says, I think I understand why you were wearing that terrible wig. John asks, was it really that bad? Jay just looks at him with a smirk saying, oh yeah, it did absolutely nothing for you. Jay then says, I get why you're trying to hide. Must be hard being his son. I mean, the flying is obviously a perk, but I can understand why you'd want to be something lesser sometimes. Someone smaller. Actually, I might be able to help you with that, but we need to have another conversation first. We then get a panel of the island of Gamora, where Jay continues to say, you need to know what you did today and where it leads. Gamora is supposed to be paradise. Desperate people fleeing the country doesn't fit with the expensively constructed propaganda. You swooped in and picked up a boatload of consequences. The tyrant of Gamora will want you gone, and I know what he's capable of. President Henry Bendix will do whatever it takes to destroy you, as we see Bendix watching videotape of John saving the asylum seekers. And with that, Issue two ends. First off, for those of you who don't know who Henry Bendix is, he was formerly the head of Stormwatch. But since Stormwatch has been absorbed by DC Comics, it looks like they're about to make him a Superman villain. But there we have it, friends. Superman, Son of Kal-El, issues one and two. As for my thoughts on the series thus far, I like the concept and idea of exploring John Kent coming into his own and potentially being a better Superman than his father one day. Especially since he's of this world where Clark is not. So I like that we're gonna slowly see John grow into the role of Superman. I think that's really smart. But for some reason, unlike other Tom Taylor books, I'm not completely hooked right away from these first two issues. This is clearly supposed to be a slow burn, so we're gonna have to wait and see where John ends up and the choices he makes. Also, I feel like this series is going to be very polarizing in the sense that Taylor is taking a lot of real world issues that are currently going on right now and just throwing them into this book and exploring how John would handle those situations. And I know there's a lot of people who don't want to think about those real world things when reading comic books as they see enough of that every single day in the news and media. I'm actually kind of one of those people. I usually just want to escape from the crap that is reality because let's face it, these last two years especially have sucked. 
but then there's people who like that kind of stuff. So again, it's gonna be polarizing, I think. Either way, I'm curious to see where the series goes as it moves forward because Tom Taylor has not led me astray thus far. But that's just my two cents. Let us know what you guys think down in the comments. And that's gonna bring today's episode of Variant to a close. But if you like today's video, check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, subscribe, like, and comment. It helps the channel out. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.